Hey, I'm Dr. Kent Delay. I'm a urologist in South Carolina, and usually I make videos based on healthcare related issues in particular. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different and do a book review of a book I just finished on vacation called The Chaos Machine by Max Fisher, who is an investigative journalist out of DC. This is the inside story of how social media rewired our minds and our world. So physicians are either directly or indirectly involved in social media in that we have accounts that we're active online. We may just be perusers, but even if we have no direct social media involvement, our patients are involved with social media. And this is definitely changing the fabric of our society and how we interact with each other. This book looks to examine that phenomena and see how it's played out. So the basic thesis of the book, I would say, is that Facebook and basically many of these social media companies would tell you that they are a neutral platform for social interaction and for human connection. The thesis here, however, would be that it is not a neutral platform, that it in fact drives very specific types of behavior and in fact, drives behavior that is towards the edges of the spectrum, whether it be right or left politically. So I would say as a background, social media has exploded since I have even lived in my life. So Facebook was just coming around when I was in college. It is now a massive enterprise with 3 billion utilizers worldwide. And I think a lot of the desire for utilization of social media and activity is that we are less connected as a society, that social organizations, civic organizations have broken down to some degree and that we go online to fill this hole. I think that social media can have a very positive role and it has in my life in many ways, but there is a danger in it. And the dangers are what he outlines here. And if we don't see, find ways to address them, they're gonna only progress over time. So in the beginning of the book, he talks a little bit about social media shaming and how this can really become a very significant activity where it essentially becomes bullying of folks. So there have definitely been people who've made missteps and made misstatements online, but the price they pay becomes extremely exaggerated when they're essentially called out uh, online there tends to be a pile-on effect, uh, and I think anybody who has utilized social media a lot has experienced this to some degree, but for some people, the consequences can be severe, it can be the loss of jobs, can be bullying, can be death threats, uh, for what may be situations that aren't exactly what they seem on the, the surface. The bigger thing, uh, however, is as dangerous as that is, what we're actually seeing is that the very fabric of our society is being pushed to more extreme variations by these algorithms. We are essentially a target for ad revenue when we are utilizing social media. That is the end game. It is not social connection. It is ad revenue. To increase their basic uh, standing economically, they have to find ways to get us more and more involved and utilize their platforms more and more. There are only so many humans on the planet. They're trying to expand the number of folks who are utilizing the platforms, but they also need the people who are utilizing the platforms to utilize them more. And in doing so, their algorithms are driving content that is more likely to catch and hold our attention. Uh, but in doing so, it is inevitably leading people down rabbit holes. So for example, someone may be interested in uh, the Canadian psychologist, Jordan Peterson. He's written 12 Rules for Life, other books, uh, and he would be on the right side of the political spectrum. But what they found is on platforms like YouTube and other platforms that his content is on, that you may start with Jordan Peterson, but would increasingly be drawn into alt-right uh, both Facebook groups, video content on YouTube. And so that what we're seeing is that for many people, they become increasingly radicalized in that they may start on one end of the spectrum, whether it be left and right, but the content they're delivered becomes more and more extreme in an effort to keep people more engaged with the platform. And this pulls us further apart. So I used to kind of think that the problem was that we tended to congregate with like-minded people on social media, that if I'm a political liberal, I'm gonna follow other liberals. 
But the problem is actually worse than that. It is not that I'm just going to follow like-minded people. It is that content that is going to be on my side of the spectrum is going to be delivered and is going to attempt to entice me f further towards my edge, whatever that edge may be. And this is one of the reasons, certainly, that we are becoming more polarized as a society. But the, the real world where the rubber meets the road is not just that we are seeing polarization and that we are having fractured relationships over political issues. We're seeing real life consequences. A, a number of these are outlined in the book. For example, uh, the mosque shooter in New Zealand from a few years ago was clearly brought into his world of thought uh, against Muslims through YouTube activity, and in fact live streamed it on uh, Facebook and YouTube, uh, which was quickly taken down, but he was clearly brought into that world. Violence in Myanmar and Sri Lanka, where Muslim minorities have been targeted, was clearly driven by social media activity with lack of uh, basically oversight, lack of the resources in those countries to supervise the content like it may be at least somewhat more supervised in European uh, countries and America. So with there, we have seen massacres of Muslim minorities in both uh, Myanmar and Sri Lanka. In Europe, we've seen anti-immigrant and anti-refugee activity explode online. In the United States, almost certainly two events would have never happened if it had not been for online social media groups. This would be uh, the protest in Charlottesville uh, by right-wing groups, which ultimately led to the death of Heather Heyer uh, when she was hit by an automobile, an automobile intentionally there. Uh, the January 6th uh, insurrection was essentially propagated by online social media groups and brought the organization together. So the fact is, is that the political content and social content that we absorb on social media drives us further down to that extreme and presents opportunities to affect our society in concrete fashion. I focused a little bit more on the right here because that is what the book focuses on, but there's certainly examples on the left where, you know, granola moms, so to speak, have joined anti-vaccine groups and have increasingly gone down that rabbit hole. So there's a lot of misinformation online and it isn't that, uh, the platform is a neutral space for understanding our interactions and information from other people. It intentionally drives us into content that is more extreme and more likely to keep us engaged for ad dollars. These companies, Facebook is certainly the worst of them, have been extremely resistant to change uh, on the platform of free speech and keeping uh, their platform an opportunity for social interaction. But clearly, there's going to have to be some type of regulation if we're going to see a light at the end of the tunnel here. So I think this is an important book. I wouldn't say it was a fun book or a fun read, but social media is such a huge part of the world. It will continue to impact our society in significant ways that if we don't understand it, we're less likely to understand how we may be impacted and less likely to understand how it impacts our society. Highly encourage it. This is not the fun beach read that you want to take on your, your beach vacation, but it's an important work.